the reality of human beings is that we're all flawed. We require, as human beings, perfection to fill in for our gaps and to erase our mistakes. The notion of salvation to a Muslim, the notion of having your sins forgiven, is something that every single believer should be concerned with. And so in the beginning of Surah An-Nisa, we read, وَمَن يَعْمَلْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Anyone who does something evil or harms themselves with sin, but then they move to seeking forgiveness, then they will find that Allah by nature is forgiving and merciful. It's very simple. And most people on planet earth, if they just simply knew this very basic core understanding, would want to become Muslim. Many people who are spiritual or deists, people who believe in God but not sure about organized religion, their problem is because of a lot of very irrational or strange beliefs. Or, even with Muslims, they've been exposed to an attitude that seems like Allah can't wait to throw everybody in the hellfire. Which is very different than the way Allah describes Himself throughout the Qur'an. So the ayah is telling us that all you have to do is be inclined back to Him and realize that you are mistaken. لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ Same surah. Those who do evil, and they do it on accident, it's an, a moment of ignorance, a moment of weakness in their faith. But then after that, they quickly realize that they're wrong and they turn back. This is the tawbah means to turn back. It means you've, you've gone the wrong direction and you need to turn back. That's literally the linguistic connotation of the word tawbah. And so as the Prophet ﷺ said, At-ta'ib kamalla dhambala The repentant person is like one with no sins. You see, how would you know what a sin is in the first place? It goes back to the point we've been hammering. Because so-and-so said, because uncle or brother have said, because I heard the guy at the mosque saying, does that make it haram? I'm looking for an answer here. No, it does not. I think we should all know this. There are many, many, many times I have heard people saying that's haram, and either that person is completely false, or that is an opinion among scholars, of which there are many other opinions on the same subject, amongst great scholars of the greatest form. And so it would require us to be engaged in a scriptural study, reading Qur'an on a regular basis, reading hadith on a regular basis, so that we would know what is it to deviate from the straight path. So we're, we're praying, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطُ mustaqim. That's the prayer we pray, right? Who can tell me how many times you must say this a day? 17. You have 17 rak'ahs in a day, right? 2, 4, 4, 3, 4, right? And so in each one, you're praying, guide us to the straight path. Then the next surah, Al-Baqarah, starts out saying, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِي That lofty book, that is right in your hands, but it's so important that it's being talked about as though it's something far. Meaning you have to work hard to reach it. Because in Arabic when you say hadha, this is for this. The close, ishara lil qareeb. But dhalika is over there. And this is the using this um, eloquence to refer to something that you need to seek after and go for and find because of its lofty status and important nature. So many people are just simply translating it, this book. But that's actually a bad translation, correct? It would be Hadha al-Kitab, would be the, the correct understanding of this book. So um, this is the attitude of the believer, is that, oh, astaghfirullah, like I've moved away from my purpose and my meaning, now I have to go back. And so we look at the Prophet he says, مَنْ أَكْثَرَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ أَوْ مَنْ لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ and we know in the Qur'an in Surah At-Talaq, 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the same language but is referring not to istighfar but taqwa. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ so taqwa, piety, mindfulness of God, it will lead you because you know revelation, because you realize, you feel guilty, you are regretful. The Prophet ﷺ said, at tawbah and nadim. Repentance is a sense of regret, a sense of you wish you hadn't have done it. So then you turn back. And so the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith we just mentioned, whoever seeks a lot of forgiveness and they are regularly looking into the forgiveness of their Lord, then he will make for every sense of anxiety and sadness a sense of comfort and ease. He will make every hardship a way out. He will give them sustenance where they could not have imagined that it will come from. Right? And what that's about is, is that the sins that we have in this world, if they go unchecked, what happens? Then there are musa'ib, there are hardships that come to us, which will give us what? A sense of anxiety, right? Because that sin is there. If the sin's not there, can we have anxiety? Was the Prophet ﷺ having anxiety? The Prophet ﷺ had merciful compassion and sadness for people who wouldn't believe, but for his own, no matter what, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, wa atubu ilayh. How many times the Prophet ﷺ is seeking God's forgiveness and repenting to him in a day? How many? 100. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Somebody said, okay, well then whether he's sinning a lot. Some people say, and I don't think this is a fair assessment that he's just doing that as a way to show an example. No, he's doing that because the world is full of sin. He's seeing sin, he's around sin, he's hearing sin, he's a human being, he can think as a prophet of sin. He can make mistakes, the Quran points out mistakes he made. You see? And so, he's constantly in a state of turning back to his Lord, seeking his forgiveness, seeking the erasure of these sins. And so in the Quran it says, "In tajitani bu kaba iramatun hona anhu nu kafir anhu ankum sayyati kum wa nudhil kum mudhalan karima." It says, "If you will avoid the major sins, the major things you are prohibited, and then you will live the best best of your life after that, then He's saying we will forgive you all of your sins and remove all of your sins." So what are the major sins? Who can tell me? So Imam uh, Dhahabi, he wrote a book that had 78 some odd major sins. Ashirku billah, obviously, to worship other than God. What's another one? Let's see how far we can go here. Huh? Sihr, to work with the jinns for black magic. What else? So to do shameful, immoral deeds, you know, of a sexual nature and things like that. Yes, what else? Hmm? Oppressing people, using your power to oppress someone else. What? Murder. What else? Yeah, hopelessness. To just be like, yeah, Allah's not going to do anything. I'm. Uh, that's a major sin. Somebody else said, "Uquq al walidain." It's a big one. Uquq al walidain is basically where you disrespect your parents in a way that's obvious. Like you could care less. Like you just act in a way like they don't matter and you know you could just do whatever you want or you don't care how they feel and you, you're doing something that clearly is annoying and bothering them. Right? What is it? Huh? We said murder. Yeah. What else? Ghiba wa namima. Very good. This is our big sin in the Muslim community. Backbiting and slandering. You know? You know what the difference is? Backbiting is when it's true and that's a major sin because there is a punishment for it in the hereafter. How do we know something's a major sin? Because Allah has described or the Prophet ﷺ described the one who did that will have a punishment either in the hereafter or this life. Or if it says La'natullah alayh that whoever did this has the curse of Allah. Or if he said Laysa minna they're not from among us. Right? And we said before whoever is not merciful with small children and respectful to the elders. He said Laysa minna. Subhanallah. So we have many. What about Tariq salah Right? The one who is not praying. The one who is not fasting, the one who is not giving their zakat. And the list goes on. We should definitely um, review those and make sure that we know what those are. And you can find places where they're listed. Some of them are scholarly debate about them, but there are some that we really should all be concerned with in our lives. May Allah protect us from all sin. May Allah make this month the month of forgiveness. And may Allah uh, count us among those who turn back to Him on a daily basis many times. Jazakumullah khair.